Greetings students and welcome back to another video on differential equations. In this lesson I'm going to solve the Hermite differential equation or the Hermite ODE and come up with the Hermite polynomials. These guys will serve us really well in quantum mechanics and in physics in general, particularly when we come up with solutions for the quantum harmonic oscillator. A lot of these famous differential equations, Bessel's, Legendre's, Aries, all these equations with special solutions are usually second order linear ODEs, and the Hermite differential equation is no different. It's given by the second derivative of y with respect to x minus 2x times the first derivative of y plus 2 lambda y equals 0, where lambda is some real constant. Now, how do we solve this differential equation? Well, we can't use the exponential solution e to the rx since we don't have constant coefficients. We also can't use the solution x to the alpha since this doesn't take the form of an Euler equation. But we can use a simple series solution where we suppose that y is an infinite polynomial series with unknown coefficients a sub n that we ultimately have to solve for. I've discussed using series solutions in my previous videos on ODE, so have a look at them if you're unfamiliar. But the general procedure is that you take y, find the first derivative dy by dx, and then find the second derivative. And then you substitute all of that into our differential equation to solve for the unknown coefficients a sub n. Now the first derivative of y is quite easy to find. Take the coefficient on the power series n, pull it down, and then subtract that power by 1. We don't have to worry too much about the summation bit since the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives, so this works for every term in the summation. Notice how I haven't changed my n to start at 1 instead of 0. The reason I didn't do this is that although I could start this series at n equals 1, the n equals 0 term is 0 anyway, so starting my series at n equals 0 won't really make a difference. I personally choose to start at n equals 0 because it's more convenient and consistent, at least initially. I've had a lot of people asking me the same question in my series solution videos, so I thought I'd clarify beforehand. Now I can take the second derivative of y using the same process. Pull down the n minus 1 exponent and then decrease it by 1. And if you do that, you'll have your second derivative. Let's now substitute y and its derivatives into the Hermite ODE. And when we do that, here's what we get. Now, if we go back to our original differential equation, we can see that the equation is continuous and differentiable at x equals 0. With the coefficient of the y double prime term equal to 1, there's nothing in this ODE where something is being divided by x or anything. As a result, I can center my power series at x naught equals 0 and not have to worry about a restricted radius of convergence. My power series solution will apply for all finite values of x. And when I set my x naught to 0, here's what I get. I can now distribute this 2 and distribute this x inside the summation to end up with x to the power n. And I do the same thing with the 2 lambda to end up with the following expression for the ODE. This is the point where I use the fact that the n equals 0 term and the n equals 1 term in this first summation are 0 to start the series at n equals 2 instead. Let's analyze this equation. Our ultimate goal is to find the unknown coefficients a sub n, and the best way to do that from what we have right now is to come up with an equation involving a sub n. We could theoretically expand everything and solve for every single coefficient individually, but it's much easier to combine these summations somehow and combine the corresponding coefficients. But right now we can't do that combining because we started different values of n for each summation and we have different powers on the x, so we can't really combine things yet. That is, unless we change up this first summation that looks out of place to have an x to the n instead of an x to the n minus 2. And the best way to do that is to let some other dummy index m equal n minus 2. In that case, our n is equal to m plus 2, and instead of starting at n equals 2, we can start our summation at m equals 0. And when we convert the summation in the index n to a summation in this new index m, we get the sum from m equals 0 to infinity of m plus 2 times m plus 1 times a m plus 2 times x to the m. Note that n and m are just random letters we picked for our indices. We're not restricted to picking m as our new index. So what I'll do is I'll change m back to n since it doesn't really matter what letter we have. And when we do that, here's what we end up with for our equation. 
Now we're at the stage where we can combine our summations to a single summation because we're starting at zero everywhere and we have the same exponent on x throughout. We can now take the x to the n common to get the following. So this summation overall must equal zero. One way we can do that is to have x always be zero, which isn't possible really. We have to obtain a function y of x eventually, so x can't be restricted to a single value. The only other possibility is that the coefficient of x in this summation is always zero, and that's the only correct answer here. And when we set the coefficient of x in this summation to zero, we finally get the equation that allows us to find the unknown coefficients a sub n. We can then isolate the a sub n plus 2 in terms of a n to end up with a neatly packaged recursion relation, a relation between future coefficients in the sequence and past coefficients. Now, a n plus 2 is only related to the coefficient that's two places behind it. So if I start at a naught, I'll then be able to find a 2, then from a 2 I can get a 4, and so on. However, I won't be able to get a3 or a5 or any odd indexed a from a0 because there's no link between odd indexed ans and a0. An is only related to the a that's two places behind it. On the other hand though, if I had a1, I could get a3, then a5, and so on. So in the end, I have two sequences of coefficients. My first sequence is for even indexed coefficients, a0, a2, all the way to a2k where k is some whole number. And then my second sequence is for odd index coefficients, a1, a3, all the way to a2k plus 1 where k is again some whole number. Since these even and odd sequences are relatively independent from each other, we can say that each sequence corresponds to one linearly independent solution to this differential equation. I'll call the solution corresponding to the even sequence y even, which is given by the sum of the even indexed coefficients multiplied by the even powers of x. And then meanwhile, I'll call the solution corresponding to the odd sequence y odd, given by the sum of the odd index coefficients multiplied by odd powers of x. A linear combination of y even and y odd would then result in my overall solution y to this Hermite differential equation. Now that we've set things up, let's actually solve for the coefficients. We'll start with the even sequence. Now in terms of a0, a2 is given by substituting n equals 0 into our recursion relation, from which we find that a2 is just 2 times lambda times a0 over 2 times 1. a4 is found by substituting n equals 2 into the recursion relation, which gives us the following in terms of a2. And then if we plug in the a2, then in terms of a0, this is what we have for a4. And then a6 is similarly given by the following expression, which can be simplified to this in terms of a0. Are you seeing a pattern yet? Well, you probably are. I invite you to pause the video and come up with a general formula relating any even coefficient to a0. All right, time's up. In general, every even coefficient a2k is related to a0 by some negative 2 to the power k times lambda times lambda minus 2 and so on all the way to lambda minus 2k plus 2. This is all then divided by 2k factorial and multiplied by a0. I invite you to verify that this is indeed the pattern for the coefficients a2, a4, and a6. Let's now look at the odd sequence. If we start at a1, we can then use the recursion relation to find a3. We can then find a5 in terms of a3, which we can then plug in to determine a5 in terms of a1. Once again, I invite you to pause the video and come up with a general formula for the odd index coefficients in terms of a1. And when you come up with that formula, this is what it will look like. So now that we've got formulas for our odd coefficients and even coefficients, we can write down our even solution y even and our odd solution y odd. We can also expand out the first few terms in each of these solutions to get the following. Of course, the a0 and a1 are common to all the terms of y even and y odd respectively, and they represent unknown constants that are found from any initial or boundary conditions. Let's take a moment now to look at the formulas for our two linearly independent solutions, y even and y odd. Remember that lambda is an unknown constant that was originally specified in our differential equation. If lambda happens to be a non-negative integer, then there may come a point when lambda minus 2k plus 2 or lambda minus 2k plus 1 is 0. 
And then once that happens, the corresponding coefficient becomes zero. And in addition to that, since each coefficient is related to the coefficient that's two spaces behind it by the recursion relation, every subsequent coefficient will also be zero. So if the an term is zero, then an plus two, an plus four, etc., they're all going to be zero as well. And then when this happens, all the coefficients before an will be the only ones that are non-zero. So instead of having an infinite series containing the sum of a bunch of polynomial terms, we'll have a finite polynomial series because our infinite series was prematurely terminated. And this finite polynomial that we end up with because of having an integer lambda, this finite polynomial is called a Hermite polynomial, the polynomial solution to the Hermite differential equation. Let's copy paste our even and odd index solutions and let's use this to give some examples of the Hermite polynomials, which I'll denote by h sub lambda of x. If we set lambda to zero, the even index solution terminates. We don't even get to x squared, so our solution is just a naught. The odd index solution, however, continues forever since lambda equals zero won't cause any coefficient in the odd solution to become zero. The solution that terminates is the Hermite polynomial, but the solution that continues forever in this case is given a different name. It's either denoted by the small h sub lambda x, or it's denoted by this one capital F one of negative lambda over two, one over two and x squared, which is a fancy way of writing the confluent hypergeometric function of the first kind. We don't have to worry too much about this though. It's a mouthful anyway. Now from the solution that terminated, the y even, we can write the zero degree Hermite polynomial as h naught of x equals one. a naught is just a constant multiple of that. Now let's look at the next Hermite polynomial. If we let lambda equal one, then this time our odd solution terminates and we end up just with a one x. Our even solution continues forever and is again the confluent hypergeometric function of the first kind, but now corresponding to a lambda of one. Our first degree Hermite polynomial is then a constant multiple of a1x. Conventionally, we like to set a1 equal to two for this Hermite polynomial, so h1 is just two x. Similarly, for lambda equals two, y even terminates, giving us a naught times one minus two x squared. Meanwhile, y odd continues forever, and we have the confluent hypergeometric function for a lambda of two. The second degree Hermite polynomial is found from y even by setting a naught to negative two, giving us an h2 of four x squared minus two. You can keep going with lambda equals three, four, five, and so on. And for each solution that terminates, you get a Hermite polynomial, or at least a constant multiple of a Hermite polynomial. Now, just like Legendre polynomials, Hermite polynomials also have their own Rodriguez formula, which looks like negative one to the n times the exponential of x squared times the nth derivative of the exponential of negative x squared, and that is our nth degree Hermite polynomial. So you can use this formula to come up with Hermite polynomials of any degree. But before I end this video, I wanna mention a little twist to this entire discussion. The Hermite polynomials we've discussed aren't the only Hermite polynomials. They're called the physicists' Hermite polynomials. The other type is known as the probabilists' Hermite polynomials given by H E lambda of x. These guys are part of the solution to the probabilist Hermite differential equation, which is very similar to the physicist Hermite differential equation we solved with the exception that there's a one next to the first derivative term instead of a two. And as an exercise, I invite you to solve this differential equation in your spare time and come up with the probabilist Hermite polynomials yourself. Anyway, that should do it for this video. I'd like to thank the following patrons for supporting me at the $5 level or higher. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan signing out.